Scrape off one, five popped up. Try to pick out all the mushrooms. Scrape off the surface tissue. When I saw this guy, I just fell in love. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I'll be honest with you. Last video, I tried the whole voiceover thing. I'm not feeling it. I know some of you guys may like it, but to me, I feel like I was rushed to kind of put all the words I want to say within that little time frame. I'm just not feeling it. So we're going back to this whole straight up vlog style. You hear a little bit more rambling, so I apologize in advance. We are gonna once again look at this piece of rock. I've been looking at this piece of rock a lot. I've been looking at how these zinnias are slowly growing back, but what really prompted me trying to pull this rock out again today, look at all these little mushrooms. You look back a couple of videos, I pulled this rock out, pulled off or scrape off all the mushroom also I thought. But look at this, it's like wherever I scrape off one, five popped up. Look at all these guys right here. So before all these mushrooms detach like this one and float over the tank, I'm just going ahead and pull this rock out one more time, give it one more try. I bought some new scalpels and I bought some new tweezers that's a little bit, uh, has better grip. Hopefully I'll be able to do a cleaner job in terms of pulling these mushrooms and these zinnias out because it's, uh, dude, it's ticking over. Right now I am still battling some sort of issue in this tank. Uh, I think it's low phosphate. I'm slowly bumping the phosphate up and waiting for things to open up. More and more of the rasta is always opening up. We see the yellow brick road uh, open up a lot more now, but now it becomes a different issue. Now, while the zoa is closed up, we'll see the Cyphestria totally moved into the zoa territory and grew between the zoa, choking them out. They're kind of growing around the stock of each zoa, choking each individual polyp out, which is insane. Like this rock gets more and more impressive each time I pull it out and look at it. All right, here we go. And my wife loves me so much that she follows me everywhere. Uh, sure. We got a new tweezer with like better grip at the top because it's new. The other one's all gummed up with super glue, so it does not do a super good job grabbing things. Let's see here. All right, you know what? I see some squirting. I'm gonna put on my goggles. We're gonna go with the scorch earth method. Anywhere as zinnia, I'm just gonna scalpel and just scrape off a layer of rock. Uh, people say that you cannot really get rid of zinnias. <laughs> I think there's some truth to it, but hopefully I can get rid of most of them, if not all. 2,000 years later. That was not fun at all. Um, I spent a good maybe like 20, 25 minutes really carefully just try to pick out all the mushrooms and all the zinnia. But the problem is like the zinnia is so small that it's really hard to kind of just like get a good grip and pull it out. And so I try to scrape it as much as I could, even sacrificing some of the um, soanthid polyps along with it really carefully, of course. But I can already tell there are some like remnants of the uh, zinnia tissue that I'm sure is going to come back. And just looking at this, I think I got some mushroom on the perimeters that um, I scrape off the actual mushroom disc, but the stem is still there. I did the best I could, they're going to come back. And what's more is that the Cyphestrias has completely taken over the rock. It's growing around a lot of the zoa polyps. So I think it's just a matter of time before this whole rock becomes a whole big colony of uh, Cyphestrias, which is okay. I mean, this is a beautiful morph, but at the same time, I'm worried that as the zoa struggle to survive, is it actually releasing something into the water? That I'm not sure. And this is a big chunky rock. I wanna show you this first. Look at this, it started dropping mushroom uh, around the tank, so I'll pull those out, flush them, and that is actually cool. We got a couple polyps of yellow brick road that can hop off the rock, so I will start another colony with those little polyps. So that's, um, I welcome that, not so much that, unless these are uh, jawbreaker, and I would not mind. The second thing I want to address today is this right here. This is the Gorgonian, the fluffy Gorgonian that has been passed around my reef club a lot and I got it from Lynn. It used to sit right in the middle. It's almost considered a centerpiece of this tank until I moved it away for the SPS. Um, I want to... I don't know what I want. Well, first I want to mount it onto a, probably a frag plug if possible or possibly split in two. And I'm thinking maybe like have it right there because I got a frag plug holder with a little slot right there that could work. Or just shove it in the corner right there. That will work as well. But first of all, I need it to be able to stand up straight. Oh man, it attached? Uh, looks like in the span of about two weeks in the back, it attached a rock already in that awkward position. All right, we got one. All right, new pair of gloves as well. We have to also treat Gorgonian with respect. Uh, I remember reading an article where Gorgonian actually is suspected of releasing certain chemical as well in terms of uh, coral welfare. So there's something going on here. So don't treat this lightly. 
treat all corals with respect in terms of like your personal safety as well as of course the well-being of the corals. So in terms of mounting Gorgonian, ideally you just shove into the crevice of a rock and you're good to go. But if you really want to mount them on the frag plug, the recommendation is to scrape off the surface tissue of the Gorgonian, leaving only the exposed wire skeleton uh, in the middle. And then you drill a, or punch a little hole in a frag plug, shove this in and then super glue it, and then you're done. And you do not want to have any of the live tissue within the super glue because what's going to happen is that the live tissue in the super glue is going to decay, right, and melt away. You're left with this little emptiness and the frag could just float away. Now in my particular case, because this one has a nice little U-shaped hook right here, I feel like I may be able to just shove it into that rock right there because you see how slanted I feel like that little J hook could just go in and just hook on that rock so I'm gonna try that first before I actually mount it onto a frag plug ah perfect and we just pushed out a huge estria starfish three days later I've been looking around for a small and beautiful Mineris Rast for uh, the Verminta snail issue. Um, there's rumor that they may pick at it. And I also want a Rast on standby in case there are any kind of pests that pops up in the tank, for example, like flatworms. I've kept silver belly Rast in the past. I've kept Mineris Rast in the past in the uh, 45 gallon tank. They've all done really well for me. I uh, love these guys. Originally, I wanted to find a smaller guy, maybe like two, two and a half inches small one to kind of stop them off. But uh, when I saw this guy, I just fell in love. Color is really intense, looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, this guy is really active without being a little bit crazy, just really reasonably active. And um, it's picking up rock work and stuff like that, which is fantastic. So went ahead and got him. Price was good too. It was $44. Now, if this fish had been a tang, I would absolutely try my hardest to get it from a quarantine source, whether it's from a fish store or a tank breakdown or whatnot. But because RAS for the most part does not seem as problematic, I feel pretty good, especially since I was able to observe it for uh, like 10 minutes or so. I'm just like watching it swim around, eat, seems healthy and seems alert. Uh, so I went ahead and got him. So I'm gonna check the pH of the bag versus the tank and if they're close enough, then that should be good. I'm gonna run the uh, safety stop uh, dip uh, to make sure knock out any like uh, external parasites make sure it's good and clean for the most part I think it should be okay and then we're gonna go ahead and just release the fish into the tank so be back later two hours later all right and here we go welcome to your new home hope you enjoy it here man what a beautiful fish look at that I really like the fact that it's uh it's calm it's not dashing over the place, diving into the sand right away. It just kind of settled in. And please don't go into this <laughs> roast bubble to an enemy. Yeah, the guy's just chilling. There should be a lot of things for this guy to eat around the tank. I mean, at night, I see all these like mice and shrimp just swimming around. I see copepods on the, on the glass and stuff like that. So I think, yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, so close to an enemy. Yeah, please don't go there. You know what would be the bonus? The bonus would be if the flasher rasp, which is this guy right here, see that guy, maybe the two rasps, hopefully they won't fight, but they'll just keep flashing at each other. That'll be fantastic because this rasp is absolutely beautiful as well. And I, I do wish that he flashed more. By flashing, it means just like kind of extending the fin. And uh, apparently different types of fairy rasps flash each other or flasher rasps, they flash at each other and they don't really fight. I wonder if this guy would do the same with the Mineris rasp. There he is, look at that. He is exactly what I need. The, in terms of aesthetic as well, in terms of coloration, we got like a lot of orange fish. We got a nice big yellow fish. We got a nice blue fish. Now we need some different color and green is um, one of the pellets that I'm kind of missing in terms of fish. Look at this guy, look how beautiful this is. With the stripe, this whole fish, it's not pricey, it's not a pricey fish, $44. Uh, he, looks, he looks exotic, something different. Not like a solid colored fish, but with the stripe and stuff like that. It's just absolutely beautiful fish. Look at that. Awesome. So awesome. So happy. But uh, of course, I'm going to put the lid back on. And uh, we'll give this little dude some time to settle in. Although it looks like he's all settled in already. I don't think he needs any extra time. This is so fantastic, man. Such a joy to add fish to a tank. Especially when you see them doing well like this. Well, okay, okay, I should knock on wood. I'm like, <laughs> knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay. 
I feel good about this one. The next morning. I know this is what wrasses do, but this makes me nervous. And what I mean by that is that the Minoneris wrass has disappeared. And if you guys remember, the uh, fairy wrasse also disappeared for the first, well, not disappeared, but like hiding. He went into hiding for the first couple days in this tank. Eventually I found him in this rock right here, just peeking his head out. It took him about almost a week to really get comfortable and start swimming out. And from what I understand, Mineris Rast, they are famous for just hiding in rockward, hiding in the sand for at least the first week or so until they start coming out. So I'm just hoping that's it which was a little bit surprising as well because he was so comfortable just kind of swimming around among the other fish and among the corals yesterday. Uh, by the way, this is uh, the next morning. So we'll see, um, try not to overreact, but I did look around the tank, make sure nothing is on the mesh top, making sure nothing, I actually didn't check the side, so I'm kind of nervous, there's a little spider right there. Yeah, and make sure there's nothing back here as well. Um, everything seems clear and nothing in the sump and refugium, so I'm just, thinking that it's probably in the sand somewhere. Right, Kowloon? Right. Yeah, um, real quick updates. Gorgonians, while I shove it in that little slot right there, it was getting spun around a little bit by the flow. So I super glued a little bit of it down. So much for uh, the zen and the just letting where corals grow, right? But we'll try that little spot right there. Uh, super glue it down so at least it's standing straight up like so. The other thing that happened is that while I was uh, cleaning out a tiny patch of Xenia in the SPS ledge, I broke off a chunk of the um, Forest Fire Digitata, which I'm still kicking myself for. But the silver lining is that I was able to mount it right here underneath it. So I thought if it does grow out in that area, uh, it would be pretty dramatic looking. It would kind of enhance this area in terms of coloration as well as the texture of uh, things kind of shooting outwards towards the flow, which I assume it will grow. Uh, so that's good. The other thing is that I mentioned I wanted to move the hammer from this location because it was being uh, shaded by the torches growing. So I moved it to the back and you'll see how sad looking it is. Um, but it does seem to be opening back up again, so that's good. I remember when I first moved the hammer to this location, it was looking like this too. And then over the course of about a month or so, it just got large and happy like this. So hopefully it'll, it'll do the same again. But uh, yeah, I think right now my main concern is the Mineris Rast, and I promise I'll try to learn how to pronounce it properly. And um, it's probably okay, but never feels good when one of your fish disappear. The next day. I am so happy to report that on the third day, the Minoneris Ras is back out and once again competing. Uh oh. Once again out and about and is aggressively competing for flake food with the other fish. Awesome. It's made my day, made my week, possibly made my whole month, maybe even made my whole half a year. I've been wanting this fish for quite a while for those of you who've been following the channel. Uh, just always waiting for the right one to come along. This guy is a little bit larger than what I would have liked, but just like the, the color, the temperament, and the health, obviously. Um, just top notch, couldn't ask for a better one. So I was talking to Daniel from New York, one of those uh, OG reefers, and we we're talking about QTing fish, and he did mention that um, Ras was indeed a little bit better with Tang in terms of uh, not QTing. Obviously, you still want to QT as much as possible, but Ras do have this slime coat that kind of help them slough off certain like external parasites. But one thing he did mention to watch out for is uh, head shake. He mentioned that uh, certain Ras, if they shake the head, it could be an indicator of uh, flukes in the gill and whatnot. And he recommend doing a freshwater dip uh, in the future for Ras, you know, but although that's more like a lengthy process, not like a one-time deal, you do have to QT the fish and kind of dip every day for like five minutes or so. Um, but anyways, I'm not gonna go too much in details because I'm not 100% sure the entire process. Uh, so if you do plan to do something like freshwater dip for like external parasite like flukes, be sure to uh, look it up. But yeah, he did mention uh, watch out for like head shake. And so far, 
Little dude seems okay. Another thing I want to point out is how quickly my tank sucks up the phosphate. Uh, this is already with me just manually haphazardly dosing phosphate to keep the level up, but the demand for phosphate in this tank has just been insane and I've already dialed back the refugium light as well so I may need to put the uh, phosphate on a doser just to kind of keep the level up. As you can see as the phosphate dropped under a certain level, Zoa started closing up again. So phosphate may be it, that may be uh, the cause of all these Zoa issues. I know sometimes on my, in my video I kind of ramble on a little bit and I may cover a topic that I've covered before, for example like uh, pulling pests out or mushrooms out from that big piece of rock, I've covered that before. But that is in the life of an actual reefer, it's not always something new, something exciting. Sometimes there's mundane things and maintenance that you have to do and just it's part of the hobby. I hope you guys enjoyed this more realistic view of what it's like keeping a reef tank. It's not always fun and sunshine and rainbow. Sometimes it's going to be mundane tasks, sometimes it's going to be try and error a little bit. You think you fix a problem, but come back or sometimes you're just going to be like scratching your head like what's going on until something actually clicks. Anyways, no more rambling. Hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday. See you next Sunday at 12 30 p.m. Shop. Alright, just gonna take a little bit of a flamingoing or whatever the term is, you know what I mean.